yes, absolutely. And I know that Chile, like Australia, is, is very familiar with disasters. But what is changing, as you said, is that because of climate change, we can expect that disasters will be more frequent and more severe and also overlapping so that people are likely to experience more than one disaster in a short period of time. Even if it's in a period of one to two years, they'll still be recovering from the last disaster when the next one comes along. And that means a different approach. We no longer need to prepare for and respond to single disasters, but to think about resilience more generally and how do we ensure that our citizens are ready and able to deal with those sorts of multiple exposures. Preparedness needs to just happen on so many different levels. As individuals, we need to, to learn and act to be ready. But socially, it's also about knowing your neighbours, being connected with local groups, being part of a collective effort. And then local government needs to be thinking about what sort of services are available. And at a society level, really the best thing you can do is to address inequality and make sure that people have equal access to services and the essential elements of living. It's a major challenge for us as well. Um, just in the last couple of years, we had bushfires come through repeatedly. And then of course, there was the pandemic and there were floods and there was like a locust plague. It's, it felt like we were living through a Bible story. It was, it was just so unrelenting. Uh, and so we are also trying to recognise how do we prepare communities and support communities with multiple disaster exposure. And part of it's about recognising it will happen. It's about um, having emergent, different types of emergency services coordinating, but also that collective effort at a community level is really critical. Can I also say, um, we often focus on the physical impacts of disasters being physically safe, and what's not always recognised is that there are long-term mental health impacts for many people, and that needs to be part of our thinking and understanding of these events. This is a really rewarding part of my work. Um, in Australia, there's a lot of debate and, and recognition of traditional methods of land management and, and burning of landscapes to, to control the, the path of fires. But what we've been engaging in more recently, and this is um, with my colleagues Phoebe Quinn and an Aboriginal colleague, Biami Williamson, is what we can learn about recovery and resilience. And this is really about understanding, um, taking an holy, a holistic view of health and well-being that includes not just people, but the land, the water, and non-human beings. It's looking at collective action rather than solo making sure there are culturally appropriate uh, practices and um, services, uh, understanding previous trauma and how that can affect people's resilience, and recognising injustice that's happened and addressing that at a systems level. We can't ignore the inequity that's been affecting these members of our society uh, we have to address that before we can really heal together.